dead, dead, dead. Back in black, uh, back in the podcast room, uh. Hey guys, <laughs> welcome back to the podcast. Why did you stop? I was getting down to that. Because every time I sing Back in Black, I think of that car commercial now. Mm. I guess that's their, uh, I don't. That's their goal. Yeah, welcome to the Jen and Jillian podcast. <laughs> Today is brought to you, oh, yeah. Today's yes. brought to you by my Superman bathroom. Oh yeah, you guys don't get to see what's under it. Wow, that was inappropriate. Julian. That was inappropriate. Too fucking far, dude. Too far. Yeah, it's making a lot of noise. Yeah, the, the mics are being pretty annoyed right now. Sorry. Um, Sorry, mics. There we go. Is right? it good? <laughs> there we go. Uh, 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 and we're back. <laughs> I'm a microphone. <laughs> I'm a mic. <laughs> Jenna stole my glasses. Yeah, I stole. I stole. 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 You stole your glasses. Well, I really like those glasses because I've never worn glasses and I kind of like the way it looks, except for the fact that there's no lenses in them, so I look uh, like an idiot. <laughs> grass is always greener on the other side. No, I don't wish I had glasses. <laughs> I was I got not being serious. I glasses when I was in like fourth grade and I was like, I can't see the board. And my friend was like, here, try my glasses. And I did. And I was like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. This is magical. Yeah. I never went through that. My vision is perfect. Fuck you. I'm not trying to be mean. It just Never is. had braces. Doesn't need glasses. You're just like human 2.0. Well, I would apologize for it, but I'm not sorry for it. I have terrible eyesight, and I had braces for four years. Well, I didn't have... I never had braces. My brother and sister both had fucked up teeth. They had braces, had retainers. I had a perfect set of teeth until I got thrown off a boat, and then I had to get a retainer. Did I tell that story on the podcast? I don't, I don't know. know. I didn't know that you had a retainer. Well, I, I was I, I was given a retainer. It seems like an odd diagnosis for getting thrown off a boat. Well, I could tell you the whole story and make more sense. All right, tell us. All right, I'll tell you. Uh, so we're on a we're on a boat. I, my stepdad had a boat when we, yeah, when we were kids. Yeah, but you on a boat. You are on a boat. I set you up for that one. Okay. Doo doo. We would go on uh, the lake and we would wakeboard. We would do donut runs and all sorts of fun stuff. And for a kid, it's like the best thing ever. So right. we were you know middle school. And uh, me, my stepbrother, and my stepdad went on a donut run, which is basically when you go really fast and then you turn. Are you mocking me? <laughs> no, it's just making your face. Oh. Uh, anyway, I saw that someone took an Instagram <laughs> screenshot of like me talking on the podcast and her just like in the back. It was, like, be, it was being such a little dick. Yeah. When Bay makes fun of you behind your back. <laughs> um, anyway, we're doing a donut run. So basically you go pretty fast and then you just crank the wheel to one side and you cause a real big wake and you have to hold on tight. And it's, it's very intense, but it's, it's like a, it's a rush, you know, if you like that stuff. And anyway, we're on a donut run. We did a couple donuts and it was fun. And between one of the donuts, we were just like kind of just chilling. We were just like sitting around in the water, kind of moving around with the wake. And I move out to the front of the boat where there's not anything to hold on to. There's seats in the back, but the front is just like this flat area where you can stand or do whatever, but when the boat's still. Anyway, so I'm on my knees kind of looking around, like just completely unaware of everything. And we start to go like pretty, you know, decently fast, like 20, 30 miles an hour, which is fast on the lake. But I was like, you know, I'm up here. We're not, obviously we're not going to do any more donuts. But no, uh, my stepdad had other plans. I love him so much. He's awesome. But he was, yeah, he was just being a little shit. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to do a donut. Thank you, Dr. Hack, for that one. And he um, flipped it. And he did the he did the hard wheel turn, and I go flying off the boat, and I don't just like fly off, I like go this way, and I hit my face on the side of the boat, and then I flip into the water. And I was wearing a life vest, so I I think I sort of like lost consciousness maybe for a beat or two, but I remember like kind of just coming to in the water, floating there. And I look up, and I'm like, where am I? And I see Josh, my stepbrother, and and Ted laughing at me. <laughs> and I'm like, did they think I jumped or what happened? Um, but I was bleeding out of my mouth. And it, so what happened was the side of the boat, which is like hard, hard, hard plastic. I think it's plastic, something, whatever boats are made out of, really hard. It cut through my lip, but it like pushed through the lip. There was like a little hole and then Ew, it pushed my okay. front tooth back. Ew. You've heard this story. Oh, I forgot that was part of it. Anyway, push this front tooth back. Mm. Like, so it was significantly further back than this one. So I had to get stitches for my lip, uh, and then, and then they gave me a retainer and was like, "You have to wear this every day for like two years, or else your tooth is just never going to be level with the other tooth." And of course, I haven't worn it, so it's not level. But <laughs> that's my story. Sorry to gross you out. I get it. 
I, first of all, we also grew up near a lake or around a lake. My father would fucking kill anybody that did not take water sports seriously. He would slap anybody that did a donut ever. Like, we weren't, we were not even allowed to go down to the bank of the water unless my dad was with us. Like, he took that stuff so seriously. And I still broke my nose. <laughs> well, that's where that got him. I know. Like, everybody fucking gets hurt near water sometimes. It's yeah. just dangerous yeah. as fuck. I was the only, I was the only real, ca- why is there a flying here? I was the only real casualty on the lake. No one else ever really got hurt. Mm. You know, you, you go wakeboarding, you do jumps, you like, you know, you get roughed up, but you don't get hurt, like. That was like the only time someone got hurt, hurt. We had to leave. Uh, I don't know about somebody got hurt. Sounds like somebody hurt you. (laughs) Yeah. No, it was a bad move by doing that donut. Yeah, no good. Don't Um, play on the water like that. It's scary. Usher's kid died in like a jet ski accident. Yeah, okay. Jet skis are a different beast. I'm not cool with those things. So I mean, I've been on them and like... I've never. There have been accidents that just like make me never want to go on a jet ski. Ever. Yeah, I don't. I don't really. Especially even when you're not driving like it, that's ex- horrifying. Extreme water sports, just not my thing. Well, I like canoeing and kayaking. I love those too. And rowboating. We didn't even have a motorboat growing up, or yeah. access to one. You well, know? And you can't do donuts. Right. So what we is your just, dad even being took, mad about? We took the fucking rowboat out to the middle of the lake, went fishing. Yeah. We can swim. That's about it. Yeah. Other than that, <clears> get out of the fucking water before you hurt yourself. Yeah. No. Things can go. But anyway, <laughs> we didn't mean to make this a water sport <laughs> podcast. But, uh, yeah, that's why I had to wear a retainer and didn't. And you didn't? No. You should have seen my brother's teeth, though. My brother's teeth growing up were, like, horrible. He had braces for years. My sister, like, years braces. And I was just like, nope, I don't need it. I was just the... the, Me and my brother had awful teeth. I was a black sheep. I am the black sheep. Yeah. But we, like, okay, coming from a different perspective, I had braces for four years. So the day I got my retainer, I could not wait to wear that thing. I was like, sure, I'll wear it all day, every day. At least it's a retainer. At least it's not braces. At least I can feel my fucking face. Oh, yeah. So I wore it for a long time until I was like 25, I think I wore my retainer. And you're supposed to wear it for the rest of your life in theory, but then my roommate's dog ate it. No. But that was when I was, like, 20, so I had to get another one. But that one never worked as well as the first one. Yeah. And it, like, wasn't right. So then yeah. I slowly kind of stopped wearing it mm-hmm. up until now. Yeah, you get lazy, plus you lose it. No, it wasn't a sense of laziness. It, it like, didn't move my teeth anymore the way that I liked Because it just, like, them. fit in perfectly. It didn't do anything anymore. Right. Yeah. And he was like, this is how you adjust it. So I, like, cranked the fuck out of it. Yeah. Because when I got my braces off... They, my bite was really great. Like, I had braces for four fucking years. Like, we did the whole nine yards. Yeah, my, that's things. what my brother and sister did, like, so, years of it. Right, yeah. So ever since I didn't have my first one, I had that stupid second one, I would crank the fuck out of it, try to make it as small as possible and jam it up in my mouth. And then you'd wake up and your teeth would hurt, right? I mean, a little bit, but n- it just never went back to yeah. the way that it was. Yeah. Yeah. So I got really sad. I mean, they're straight. My bite's not perfect anymore. Let but me see. It, Oh, thanks. Yeah, no, they, they look good. They were they were not right before. No. Yeah, and like I I don't know. I had a giant gap in between my two front teeth when yeah. I was little. And Michael Huge. Strahan. Yeah, because I didn't really want to get it fixed either because I thought it was Madonna. <laughs> I was like, but mom, I don't want to get it fixed. Like Madonna has it. Okay. That's really cute. But um, I also had this thing. I don't know what it's called, but uh, it's when your gum grows too long in between your teeth. Yeah, I don't know what that's called. I don't know either, but I just remember when I was around six years old, I had to have it cut off. Wow, that is horrible. And have little stitches in there. Jesus. Isn't that scary? You have gone through it, man. Well, You've my, had yeah. some shit happen. That's why when I went, I recently got my wisdom teeth out, like, in the fall, Yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh... I was sort of like, yes, yeah, so I don't really want to get my wisdom teeth. I've been putting it off since forever. Yeah. But like, I don't know, having it done really doesn't scare me too much at this point because I've had every fucking tooth in my mouth pulled yeah, out at I some know. point. For real. <laughs> like I used to go to the orthodontist like all the time. They loved me there. So I'd just sit there. I'm like, yeah, do whatever the fuck you want, man. <laughs> I don't care. Do I get a prize at the end? I'm used to that. Cool. I, I would I would have to go with my brother and sister all the time. They were always there. Yeah. Always. Mm-hmm. I just never had anything wrong. Yeah. Crazy. Teeth. Right? It's really, although now, like, being an adult, it's kind of hard to, like, take care of your teeth as much as you want to. Like, who in the fuck flosses, like, two times a day? Not me. I can floss once a day for, like, a month, and then I get tired and, like, pick it up the yeah, next month. Yeah, and then there's, like, a Saturday when you don't do it, and yeah. then you're kind of, like, fucked, and then you're like, ah, I should floss my teeth. And you're like, yeah, but you know what I want to do? <laughs> it's not. not floss my yeah, teeth. Yeah, not floss my teeth. 
Yeah, but I just went to the dentist recently, and there, she was, like, sticking a little hook in my gum yeah. and, like, telling me my gum health. And I was like, lady, oh, my God. <laughs> dentist in a nutshell. They stab your gum and then oh, criticize your teeth clen- cleanliness habits. I was like, oh, fucking God. Okay, Ugh. I guess, yeah, I'll fucking <laughs> Why is your gum bleeding when I stab it with this mini <laughs> knife? You have horrible gums. Oh, I know. Fuck. And dentist, I still need man. it. I did, so why I got my wisdom teeth out, I went to the dentist. Yeah. And he, you know, he, I hadn't been in a really long time just because I didn't really fucking, first of all, I couldn't afford it for a long time. And then, like, I totally could and just didn't because I was a piece of shit. And uh, <laughs> so one of my teeth, like, started to bother me and I'd never had a cavity ever. So I went and I got, like, an evaluation order. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, we should fill this one cavity. Uh. And then you got to get your fucking wisdom teeth out, bitch. Uh. And I'm like, damn it. I knew you were going to say that. And then he sort of, like, laid out this plan for me. He was like, we the, the teeth next to my front teeth are actually my canines because my family, my mom, my brother, and... I were all born without like the left or the right one. Okay. So when the baby, the baby tooth never comes out because there's no adult tooth above it. Got it's it. just genetic. But the other one does. Yeah. So you basically had like one weird little baby tooth next to your two front teeth. Yeah. And then all the rest of your teeth are adult teeth. Yeah. So they pulled out the adult one and two of my baby molars because uh-huh. I was born without my six year molars or something yeah. like that. Yeah. I'm missing like so many teeth. Jeez, you're like marbles. Yeah, so then they moved all the rest of them forward. And so the teeth next to my front teeth are actually my canines that they shaved down a little bit and then added a little bit of a fake tooth to the inside of it to oh, not make okay. it shape of the canine. Yeah, yeah, I get to that. To make them squared off like the other ones. That makes sense. But the last time I had the like fake tooth like done, I was like 16 or 14 or something like that. It was like a while that. ago. So it was like literally over a decade. Yeah. So obviously they're like... A little bit miscolored or whatever yeah. but so the guy was like all right yeah we'll fill your cavity we'll take your wisdom teeth we'll do this this and this and then you know we'll fix that part of your teeth so that they they look like the rest of your so teeth whiten. and i was like super man that sounds great and so then i did all the hard work and then i didn't fucking i just haven't gone back there. well it's you in santa monica now it's like 45 um, minutes away yeah well you got them whitened. We moved what you got them whitened did we talk was, about that on the podcast? I don't think we've talked about when you got your teeth whitened. Maybe we have. Oh, well, we did a podcast like right after you got your wisdom teeth out, which I think we never talked about the whitening, but I that cried. was, she. I've, I've never seen you in pain like that. I've, like you've experienced pain. I've seen you like, like when you, when we were drunk that one night and you like fell broke and you're, you broke your toe, like you no, broke it. No, not toe, toes. Yeah. I broke both of my <clears> toes, both of my big toes. Yeah, she woke up. She was like, ah, my toe hurts. Whatever. I can't bend them anymore. I mean, you never iced it. You never saw a doctor, so it's not help. It didn't heal right, and that's not that's not, not your fault. Yeah, I could tell they were broken, though, because they hurt for, like, six weeks, yeah. and they were black. Whatever. What, it was some serious <laughs> shit that happened to your toes, and you were just like, yeah, you know, it hurts a little bit when I squat and when I work out, but, but I'm fine. No, the teeth whitening, she was crying. Like, you were crying, yeah. crying. You were, like, miserable. Nothing could cheer you up. Like yeah. and, and it was, like, residual. Like, it didn't just happen and hurt. It was, like, hurting all day. Yeah. And then you went to sleep and it hurt the next day. And I was like, what the fuck, I know. Man? And the woman was really sort of rude to me uh. about it. Because I think that it's a pretty fair assumption that people have different levels of sensitivity to their teeth. Yeah. So she was sort of treating me like... Oh, you know, I think I did the, the whitening thing four times or three times. Yeah. Like, you sit on it. They put the gel on. They, you sit under the light and you do it. You repeat it yeah. like three or four yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, oh, did you want to do another one? And at this point, I'm like, it hurts so fucking bad. It, it's like zinging in through your nerves. Yeah. Like, and it goes into your body. And she was like, oh, did you want to keep going? And I'm just like, no, no, I need to fucking, I want to leave. Like, I'm totally fucking good. Like, yeah. leave me alone. And she would not fucking leave me alone about it. She's like, oh, uh, okay, it's it's good. They look great. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, can I fucking, can I go home? Like, I'm in so much fucking pain. And then I cried after yeah. I left, yeah, which was a combination of a lot of things. A lot of things, yeah. But I was, I, like, <clears throat> it was. One of them being that lady. So uncomfortable and so awful. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that's that's one of the problems you face quite a, a lot when you're nice and you're not like a confrontational person. People just take kind of what you say and just disregard it, yeah, which is really frustrating, especially for like there. for me to see. If I were there, I would have like lost it. But, I know, but I just think that it's so insulting for you're doing something that directly like 
affects how sensitive your teeth are. So yeah, and they're very has, nonchalant about so it. So someone that has really sensitive teeth, yeah. don't tell them to keep whitening them. Yeah, they're yeah. already in a lot of pain, which yeah. I fucking was. Yeah. Like, I just don't understand how coming from someone that works at a dentist's office, she didn't, like, even ask me sort of what my pain Does it hurt? level was. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, that's insane to me. Yeah, I was sort of angry. Anyways, <sighs> enough about teeth. Yeah, well... You have good teeth now. I think your teeth are good. Your teeth are good. I just uh-huh. need to fix the fake part. Cause it's I like those fucking... white strips. Those don't hurt. Although, after I got the... Originally, after I got my braces off, we put the little fake part in there. Yeah. I was flossing it one time, and the whole thing just came Oh, my off. God. <laughs> it looked hysterical. That it is looked horrifying. It looked so funny, and I was sort of like I had to go about the rest of the next couple of days just with it off. Like, it, I looked like Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. So... There was that. My dad once chipped his tooth on a UFO. You know those like ice cream sandwiches, the really fucking hard chocolate yeah. ones? Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, we were at the park. We went to the ice cream truck. He ate it, chipped his fucking tooth. And for like a week, he had like a half a tooth. He looked like Jim Carrey in Dumb and Dumber. It was like weird as shit. But yeah. Fucking crazy. It's crazy how teeth are, man. Teeth. teeth. Fucking teeth. Right. Anyways, we wanted Enough to about talk teeth. about. Enough. Enough Shut about up about the teeth. All right. The other thing that we wanted to talk about, though, was that so we went shopping for a little bit today. Yeah, like we clothes to, shopping. Yeah, we needed to get yeah. um, a couple of outfits for things coming up. Yeah. And um, we were just like sort of baffled. Like I, I feel like most people, including myself, yeah. and including you, mm-hmm. like doing most of their shopping online when time allows. Or when other circumstances allow. And whenever right. it's allowed, when yeah. you can, yeah. like, why would I go you to the store for sure. and buy it when I could just order it? For sure. Um, so I wanted to do that, but I sort of ran out of a little bit of a time. So we fucking, we just went to the mall. And the people that are working in retail, I don't know if it was in this particular place or around this particular place or what the fuck is going on, but these salespeople were so pushy And so ridiculously, like, not picking up on social cues that I was ready to leave. Uh, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Infuriating, you could say. Like, like you say one thing to, like, it's just one thing if they, like, okay, I understand that they, you know, they're told to be aggressive. Right, I used to work in fucking retail. So, yeah, so tell me, like, how do do they... You want to fucking know the shit? Yeah, why don't you tell us? So, I used to work at an express in Rochester, New York, or like yeah. a surrounding town. I For those who don't know, Express is a relatively high end kind of clothing store, right? It's like, yeah, it's, it's not high end, but just it's, it's at, nice. It's many malls. Yeah, it's a mall store. They have men's and women's. Yeah, this was before there was a men's, I think. Okay. So I worked at Express, <clears throat> and when I got the job, I was, I think it was the summer between my freshman and sophomore year of college. Okay. And I was already working at a day camp and then I would occasionally, you know, a couple days a week and then on the weekends go into Express and work. So I was a part-time employee. But so like you're a poor fucking college kid. You're just trying to make as much money as you can over the summer. And I got hired and they're like, all right, here, read this handbook of everything that we expect of you. Aside from training aside, this is just the fucking handbook. Yeah. It was like, you need to be wearing heels between three and five inches for your entire shift. Like, you better get used to it. You have to be wearing current express clothes on your body at all times. And you can open up an express credit card, which she forced everyone to do. And then I went home and my mom was livid. She was like, that's so fucking wrong. She closed it for me. She was like, I can't believe she did that to you. Because she just was like, all right, swipe. Here's your new express credit card. Swipe. Here's yours. Because she was getting like points or our manager was getting like points for signing up so many new credit cards. But she sort of made it seem like we had to. So then she made us at a 15% discount. She made us buy express clothes to, to wear, wear to at work. work yeah so i think we all had to spend around two hundred dollars or something just to get your uniform for work just to start working but what then the knowing that you would only have a month or two window to wear that before you had to buy more clothes Ugh. and that we were allowed to wear clothes that were on the sale rack but yeah. only if they were currently on the sale rack because they want us to be walking like models for the clothes yeah so if, if you were wearing sale jeans i'm not even kidding you jeans just jeans they can only be on the sale rack. Like, it's, as soon as the last pair sells, 
you have to fucking change. Yeah. You are only allowed to have one piercing in, which is a problem <sighs> for me, because it's not like I have, you know, an extensive amount of piercings or, you know, anything that was considered alternative or anything like that. You're yeah. only allowed to wear one stud. No hoops, no dangly earrings, one stud in each ear. Your nails had to be at a short length and paint in a neutral color. I mm. wish I was fucking making this up. You could only be wearing, like... This isn't all retail, by the way. This is just one experience. Right? But yeah. But anyways, you could be wearing like a watch and like a bracelet. Everything had to be like in singles. Yeah. Like very classy. They wanted us to look like these little fucking like yeah. stepper wives. Yeah. And like, I forget the rest of it. There was some other fucking ridiculous ass shit if, if that wasn't bad enough. Like, I'm, you know, I just get home from a day camp. I'm covered in like dirt and mud. Nope. You got to shower and make sure that your nails are not chipped and painted a neutral fucking pale pink yeah. before you get to express. And you better fucking take off half your jewelry. No wonder you hated working there. That place is fucking... Right. So my feet would be fucking killing me because I'm in heels working in retail. And I'm like, what the fuck is... No other... This is Rochester, New York. We're not in downtown Manhattan. And this isn't a fucking Chanel, okay? And I was so fucking angry. So I sort of thought that all retail was like that. Yeah. That everybody needed to look like a little robot. There was never a fucking shirt out of place. Yeah. And then beyond that, in our training, we had to... So someone's job, which was when I started, my job was to just stand by the door and say hello to every single yeah, person that people. came in. Yeah. And then say goodbye to them on the way out. Can you imagine, if you have not worked in retail, how motherfucking boring that gets after six hours or so? Like, fucking kill me. In heels. You don't get to do anything else. Yeah, that's Nothing. rough. I mean, at least if you're, like, folding clothes, that's something you can do to pass the time. Yeah, you can fold the clothes in the front of the store, but you can't go anywhere else. Yeah, you no, just stand rough. there. Yeah. Like, when, once it turns, like, 9 o'clock and there's nobody fucking commenting, you just have to stand there yeah. until your shift is over. No, that's rough. In your heels and want to die. Yeah, that's rough. And then <clears> if you graduated to, like, the fitting room. Yeah. So it was, like, front of the store, fitting room. Mm-hmm cash register okay. this is the path you wanted to go yeah because if you were at the cash register you can at least like lean on it and like chat to your girlfriend yeah. and fucking hang out yeah, yeah. so for the fitting room if you worked the fitting rooms it was your job to literally go ask them what they're wearing you you know walk around the fucking store like you're basically a sales assistant at that point you're yeah. you're pushing stuff on the floor uh-huh. if you sold a certain number of pair of jeans a fucking week or however long they deemed it you would get like regional points but it would go towards our store you know what i mean like yeah. oh you're the top sales yeah in the so it's not this really doing any yeah, it's not yeah. doing you any fucking yeah. good you know what i mean yeah. and we'd have fucking staff meetings one time i wore jeans like ripped jeans to a staff meeting and i got reamed for it she was like you need to show up it was like 11 o'clock at night at the mall but anyways so it was our job when we were doing sales to find out whatever they're wearing try and basically become their best fucking friend they like wanted you to get customers to depend on you yeah to like think that you know everything about everything yeah to be your best friend like they they want yeah. you to make small talk and like to what bond you do. so yeah. the customer wants to, so that to they go want to you more. Yeah. yeah and then this was the, the part that i had the hardest with so after they pick out their outfit we had to go on our own and pick out something that we thought would go with whatever they picked. And I've seen that when we go shopping. And throw it over yeah, the door. Yeah, that's, Do you know how awful I felt? It's invasive. It's so invasive. It's terrible. Not to mention, if someone had just picked out a couple of pairs of jeans to try on, I don't know what size top they are. I would have to go and like guess and like give them a medium or something. Yeah. And then I'd be like, you have to follow up and be like, how's everything working out for you? First of all, you knock. How's everything working out for you? While they're in there and then after that you have to be like oh did you love that top that i gave you and half the time oh my god what are they thinking is gonna happen they they it pushes sales they had some bullshit statistic that just throwing an item over the door increased sales by like 75 oh my god okay i'm I'm gonna say something now hold on do you know how many times though they were like yeah i mean i really didn't want that shirt first of all and second of all it's not my size okay it's so embarrassing and humiliating, and I got this is how I got put in the back. I had a short stint in the cash register. I made it for like a couple of days, and then I was not throwing clothes over to customers. I was trying to get away with not because it made me so uncomfortable that they put me in the back room to steam clothes and like do inventory. Good. That's and I probably was, the best job I you can get. I was so happy. I can't even tell you. 
but I needed that job. Yeah, no, I get it. I just think I think it's so like when there's when there's like a company that, you know, has all corporate rules or whatever and there's, you know, people who are doing research on if you do this, you'll sell one more article of clothing a day. And like I think it's so infuriating and like disgusting of companies to look at those statistics and say fuck how the customer feels fuck being a normal person right like ignoring all of what makes shopping enjoyable just to make an extra couple of fucking dollars right. like it just it boils my blood because like you are then becoming just a profit robot machine you're right. not caring whatsoever about customer service you're not caring about the experience that the customer is having you're not caring about how comfortable they are you're just throwing your you're you're shoving your way of doing things down their throats just so you can make a dollar and it's disgusting. I hate it. I agree. I hate hearing about that. I agree because in we were never really allowed to give our opinion. Yeah. We, the only like in terms of freedom for problem solving that we were given is if someone doesn't like something, hurry up and fucking find something that they do like. Do you know what I mean? So if someone put on a pair of jeans, and we all know how difficult it is to find a pair of jeans that fit anybody. Yeah. It's just universal for everyone. Yeah. Jeans it's are frustrating. Not easy. Yeah. So, like, obviously, not all these jeans are going to make fucking people happy. Yeah. So I would have a girl that would come out and she would be like, I don't know. I don't really like these. Like, how do you think they look? I'm not allowed to be like, they're okay. But, you know, maybe if you went to fucking H&M, they might have something not. Of course you're not. that was shorter. Or, of course you're you know, not. Something... Because that's being a real human being. Why would you be allowed to right, do I'm that? I'm not allowed to say that. I'm only allowed to be like, oh, my God, they look so great on you. Yeah, we so you have, have to as lie. As soon as people come out. We have to compliment them. Yeah. But the most infuriating part was, so I basically was in this insanely strict express. And then I moved Sounds like I moved to Boston. Yeah. And I, I, I refused to go into the store for several years. Yeah. I, but my friend Jackie loved express No, I so get much. your reservations though. So I went in there. And there's fucking clothes everywhere. Girls are just wearing their sneakers. And I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like that place was my hell. I was so miserable. And everyone's just so like chill. No one even said hello to us. Well, like, how nobody long, how threw long, anything over the door. How um, long after you working there did you go to the other express? I want to say it took me a good two years. Okay, to my go my guess express. is that someone fucking stood up to their corporate bullshit and said this is not allowed. We're gonna change. That's yeah, my guess. I don't right. think it was. I don't think it was the different stores policy. I think I someone finally fucking made change by the time you went back. Do you know how hard it was for me to make money <clears> since <throat> we could only wear? Yeah, it sounds. Clothes? It sounds like fucking concentration camp. It sounds horrible. I know. Well, you know that that might be every, an exaggeration. You know, every month yeah. at least two hundred of your dollars are just coming right out of your paycheck. And it's such a like that's a pyramid scheme right there. It's yeah, fucking can, stupid. Like you can never get anywhere unless you get promoted. And yeah, you're then, becoming a slave almost. Like you're oh, go, you're owing debt. Oh, I forgot to tell you the worst part. So we had earpieces in the oh, entire yeah, time. Yeah. And if ever you're with a customer. Your manager, or my, maybe my manager was just insane, but yeah. she would just like tell you to give her things and like do things and say things to your customer. And like you're kind of put on the spot because they can see and hear you. So you kind of have to do it. Fuck that. Isn't that it is terrible? such bullshit. Yeah, I felt it was like... You must have felt so good when you stopped working there. Right. And when people ask me about go-go dancing and bartending, like, yeah, of course, there's parts about jobs, every job that you don't like. Yes. But it felt so freeing to not have to have people micromanage you oh, or God, those do rules, all of that. man. Those rules just make everyone miserable. Everyone. The customers, the employees, everyone. Was, Ugh. It, it makes me sad. miserable hearing about it. Thank you, Express. I'm never shopping at your store. <laughs> I mean, they're not. It's not like they're flourishing right now because I feel mm. like Forever Twenty One, H and M, Zara, H and M, yeah, Top yeah. Shop, no, it's it's Express like, is a little bit on the downswing. I think because the people that work because they're not fucking progressive. Right. Yeah. I've never had a problem at a Forever Twenty One or an H and M, Top Shop, Zara, yeah. any of those places with pushy customer service because yeah. I think that they figured out that that's not what is selling clothes. Yeah. Having good clothes is what's selling. Close. Uh, seriously, because and having nice, like nice people. Like, right. how how hard is it to just like 
teach your employees that if you're genuinely nice, that alone is going to make people want to come back. Right. You know, if they, if they enjoy your product, right. like it's very very simple. I know people are always trying to find a fast way to success. Like, what's the best way we can maximize profits by doing this and that? No, maybe just be nice. And maybe just have help. a good product, help people, be an attendant you would want to help you when you go shopping, right. and th- and then you fucking make everyone happy. There's no fucking, it's not. There's no balance because there's plenty of places where you can like, if from from my experience, if you go into a Forever Twenty One and you did need help, yeah, it might take a couple of fucking minutes to find somebody yeah, to yeah, get yeah. off their cell phone to come and fucking help you. For sure. But for you know the ninety nine percent of the time that you're shopping there and want to be left alone, you will be left alone, which is fantastic. Holy you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but on the other hand of things. In a place like a like a BCBG mm-hmm. or a fucking Michael Kors, yeah. I cannot. Me personally, I don't know about other people. I'm sure people that like look rich and are fucking like done to the nines get helped immediately. But it's very hard for me to get service in a nice store. Like I used to walk everywhere with my turtle backpack. Can I tell you how difficult it was for me to go and try on like yeah. a nice pair of shoes? It's profiling. That's it, how it works. It's horrible. Yeah. I couldn't, I, all my college and high school years, I couldn't walk into a 7-Eleven without the guy looking at me like I was going to go steal some chips. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. It's just age profiling. Yeah, that's, that's how it was. Like, <laughs> that kid's going to go fucking steal some yeah. Snickers. And, and as, as much as I hate it, you know what? He probably has a lot of fucking kids steal shit. Right. So, no, no, know. no. Yeah, well, yeah, let's not get into that issue because profiling aside. Is bad. <laughs> yeah, it's, I agree. none of it's good. No, no. But it is, it's sort of a hit or miss. Like you're either getting no service in a retail store or way too much service. And that's a great point. There's never like a nice, easy medium of someone saying, hey, I'll, I'll be over here. And then actually being over there. <laughs> like tonight we went shopping and this, this guy was like, and, and it was like a chick store. Like this is not a fucking men's store. It's, I don't know why he's working Wait, there, but he one? is. American Apparel no, or this Lululemon? Is, this is Lululemon. Lululemon. So Lululemon he was working there. They at. sell motherfucking leggings Motherfucking leggings. Shit. He's there to watch girls try on leggings. <laughs> Whatever. And we're, we we walk together. He's like, hey, guys, how you doing? And I'm like, we're like, good, thanks. And he's like, good, thanks. can I help you with anything? And I'm like, uh, you know, like, no, we're just no, looking. No, we'll let you know. And he's like, all right, I'll be over here. I was like, okay, well, we'll let you know if we need help. And then 30 seconds later, he, like, sees us talking about some leggings. And he comes and gives us, like, a speech about what leggings are good for what and why, <laughs> like, why, you can, have... why you can sweat in these leggings and not that. That's, dude, that's creepy and weird and also annoying that we already told you to Go away, and you're coming some. back I know with how that. It works. I already have. Do you some. think she's never worn leggings? It's Do because you? it's because I was wearing my jeans today. Oh my god, that's why it happened, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I, I can, if that happened while I was there, what would have fucking happened if you walked in there alone? <laughs> he would have just bothered you the whole time. A, because you're a girl, and B, because you're nice. Do you want me to put them on for you? Oh God. Okay, let me pull them up for you, and then pull them down. <laughs> And you. then the lady at the front, the register was like so nice and normal. I was yeah. like, what? What? Super, super sweet. Super sweet. Like, how's, know, your, how's your night going? And I'm like, remember, uh, remember the progression I told you? Yeah, but that's, those, go, are the, no, those no, no, people no. need to be working in two separate no, stores. He no, was on, no. If, they, if you're good at sales on the floor, you move to the register. So she was obviously that good and helpful and sweet yeah. and nice. No, so what I'm promoted. saying is that motherfucker should not have been hired at that store. <laughs> because at that store, they clearly know what good customer service is. Yeah, but maybe they need a man to be selling all that Lulu man shit. No, no, no. No, they don't. They absolutely don't. I imagine that a man going into a Lululemon store would not be upset if it was a beautiful woman helping them. <laughs> that guy was not beautiful. He was weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, he just wasn't right for any job, really. He should just be like a direct TV, like on the phone. That's when you call, he talks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he had the right level of creepy. Oh, man. Jesus. Then and the, then the, and then tonight the, we were shopping. At the, at the American Apparel Register... He's like undoing the security things and like fucking standing there for ten minutes, like no not sense even of not, no exaggeration, whatsoever. ten minutes. First of all, he grabs we the wrong like stack things. of clothes. He rings up all those clothes and we're like, "What is this? We yeah, didn't even." We're like those aren't ours. And he's like, "Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry about it. Um, what's a name for your receipt?" Yeah, he asked me for my name for the receipt, and I was like, "That doesn't even make any fucking sense." That's not how receipts work. You, your receipt you is your, an itemized list of what we just bought. Why your, do you need a name? Your fucking your email address, your phone number. We your walked address. into that store. You got a dress, and they were like, "Okay, uh, what's your phone number?" Like right off the bat, nothing every first. Time, every time someone asks me that, and I'm Jenna's like, like, "You know what? I'm gonna opt out of that. You can just charge me, and I'll pay for it." And I'm like, "Do you just do you just ask people their phone number like first thing? That's insane." Yes. 
Because they want your fucking address, they want your phone number, they you want your email address because they want to bombard you with shit. And, and you, uh, We're talking you, about Apple Pay. No, exactly. And Apple Pay is trying to bypass all this. Whatever. We'll get, we don't have to get into that. But, I mean, we've talked a lot about how cash is becoming obsolete and kind of stupid. But to its defense, and my buddy Mark, he's very old-fashioned that way. He carries around cash. He pays for things in cash. He keeps receipts, stuff like that. And you can, you know, say it's much more convenient for a credit card, but... You know, as much as that's annoying, he'll go into a store like that. They'll be like, what's your phone number? What's your email? And be like, oh, I got cash. Sorry, I'm just going to pay for this and then leave. They don't give, you know what I mean? Yeah, we don't, they don't get to know They don't get are. to know. It's this and that, that, like that's it. It's like that Mitch Hedberg thing when he's like, well, I wanted to buy some gum. I can't remember ever needing a situation to prove that I bought this gum. Remember? Yeah, like why yeah. would I want a receipt for it? It's just insane. And it's getting out of hand really because the stores I feel like are just getting more and more desperate to keep you coming physically into stores instead of online. So they're like, what's your phone number? What's your email? Right. But that unfortunately, it's sort of a little bit of an old construct that we don't really need to hold on to. No, you know we what don't. I mean? But a lot of jobs are, are there. So Jeez. It's just like I... I feel bad for people too, though, that work in retail because yeah. they have worked in retail, yeah, and I know you get that it. it's not <clears throat> them personally. Although yeah. that creepy guy was creepy because that's him personally. Yeah. But for most people, when they ask you for stuff like that, that girl was super sweet. When I said, "I'm sorry, is it okay if I don't give it to you?" And yeah, she, said, she was. Course. She was nice, and you know that she has to ask. She that. has to. That's ask. the problem. Like she, she probably does put not. In the back, she like does me. not want to be asking that question, but she oh is to keep her job. Oh, that's I fucking, fucked up. I high fived myself so hard for doing just the just the right amount. Of shitty to work get to get put, put in the bag. In the bag. <laughs> that's that's the calculated demotion. Oh, that's, I love That's beautiful it. work oh, right I there. I'm so happy. No, that's good. Mm. Man, no, moral no. of the story: just if you can, just shop online. I <laughs> know, right? It's so funny. Like, uh, I, I remember on one of my comments of one of my vlogs where we were going physically somewhere to shop, and they were like, "Oh, that's cute. You don't buy everything on Amazon." And I'm like. As much as you're roasting me right now, you have a point. Like, you can really do everything from your computer or get everything you need. I know. It is. A, I have had a little bit of a frustrating time in the past buying clothes online. Like, if you, especially for me, when I do some events, like, you kind of got to make sure that you're covered everywhere. Yeah. Like, you're meeting mostly young, young teenagers. You don't want to, like, bending over at a table. It can only be so short. And yeah. I know that there's plenty of YouTubers that have no problem with that, but I feel inappropriate. Like, As I, you try, I try and keep keep the girls away and keep it so you're not going to see my fucking butt all day. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times I end up being like relatively go... clothed. Yeah. yeah. But it is hard to find. Like I have kind of like big fucking strong man chick arms and like They're not man a chick giant arms. chick donk. So like sometimes chick donk. Sometimes it's hard to just order something online and then have that be a thing that works out. So da da chick down. Sometimes I have to go into a store and like try yeah, it on. Yeah, no, absolutely, and that's that's true. Like even for me, you'll, yeah, at when some they come point, up fast to too. Yeah. Like a lot of these things fucking come up fast. Yeah, and, and then, then you, you don't have time to get shipping. Yeah, you don't have and, time. Yeah. But fuck, man! Fuck, if man. I could just have a sign on my face that says "Don't fucking talk to me," that'd be fantastic. Yeah, and you know we should what? try like, that sometime. Just go to the mall with a sign around your neck. Or that says, like, what don't if what, talk well, what about me? going to the mall with your iPod headphones in? And just pretend you can't hear anyone. Like blasting music. Like, I can't hear you. No, I, I need something like way more in your face than that. <laughs> just walk in with a middle finger, be a Nick Diaz. Just That's how Nick Diaz shops. Yeah, he then walks you can't in. can't shop because you need your you hands get to shop. Out. No, because <laughs> you need your hands to shop. That's true. What about one middle finger that no, you use this hand to shop? A sign around my neck that says, don't fucking talk to me. All right, I would love good. to see who has the balls to say anything to me when I what have if a sign we, What if we made that a video? Yeah. Fucking horrible. We should go into Express. You can't film people without their permission. Well, you just blur everyone's faces. Fuck them. <laughs> they're just trying to steal excuse our me, money anyway. me, they're just trying to throw sir. shit into my dressing room anyway excuse fuck me em. sir you can't film in here yeah yeah you're gonna be blurred out anyway so <laughs> fuck you <laughs> I don't excuse think me, that's how it excuse works excuse me you can't film in here uh, sh sh shut the fuck up I have a business call I have a business call where's the wine list <laughs> yeah I was wondering if I could see the wine list uh, sir I'm gonna have to ask you to leave can I have the wine list at least before I go <laughs> I think we would all like to have the wine list before we leave there isn't a wine list. This is an express. Okay. Anyways, I don't think I knew when I was like 19 years old that retail is not for me. Yeah. Nor really well, is sales. Well, I mean, sales. good for you for you know because sales, putting yourself through that and sales having is, the patience. Sales is really, really hard, and it sort of takes the right type of person to be good absolutely, at it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I'm, I'm just not in the business of making money off of someone without you know feeling. 
I, I just don't want to tell no. someone to buy something well, that I don't think that they should fucking buy. No, you're buy. right. And that's why people who are good in business and sales like that and marketing or whatever are good because they're not good people because they do what oh, works. Oh, that's not true. Well, no, I'm, I'm not saying in, in a general sweeping statement. I'm seeing like, you know, people who are more, you know, kind of centered towards, you know, I don't know, uh, methods of doing things to make more things happen. Like just there's very like, I guess – mathematically minded or certain ways of how demographics react aren't you know are going to be good at like that kind of thing because they have less worry about you know social interaction they have less worry about how the feeling is i think that people that are behind that i think the people that are good at sales are good at seeing the positive in things they're offering something that helps people or that people like or that makes them happy they think that they're bringing it to those people and they're doing a good job of being informative and helpful and all that i think that salespeople can be wonderful people and can do it in a way that's not offensive and invasive but i think that there are some fucking used car salesmen that would love to just focus on numbers and cash and fuck everybody well that's the only reason express you know what I mean? that's the only reason express had any sort of rules like they did when you worked there because of those people yeah they just want money and dollars yeah they're maximizing profits they don't give a fuck what else I think, happens i think that there is a balance between Making sales and helping people and being money hungry. There exists a balance. I just don't know where. Come on. What? Nothing ever? No, I just, I, what do you mean? I just don't know where. Like, I don't, I can't name a store at the top of my head where I know they're 100% going to be nice to me and also help me. What about like the Apple store? Nobody in there is walking around. I'm thinking of like, I'm thinking about clothing though. Oh. Well, retail, clothing, that's, you know, what you, what you think of. Any store that you go into. Best Buy retail. sucks. They have that's the worst customer store. service. That's a retail store. Yeah, I know. Except for that one guy, uh, Max, at Best Buy in Sherman <laughs> Oaks. He hooked me up. Cool shout out. He's the man. No, because like, cause you go into a store like that and no one can help you. And then one person's like, oh, sure. Yeah, of course I can do that for I you. I have a wonderful time at Guitar Center. <sighs> We've been there a couple of times, right? That's where you got your ukulele. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I guess I was thinking mostly of clothing stores, which I still can't. I mean, H&M people are pretty nice. Um, I don't know. I just, I get overwhelmed and I think, well, I'm just. Victoria, I'm, I think Victoria's Secret does a really nice job of being respectful because they're selling something that still, for some reason, is a, a little bit taboo. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So they're, they're very respectful of people's privacy when you're looking for underwear and bras. And when yeah. they say, I'll be over here if you need help, they mean it. And they don't yeah. try and fucking follow you, at least in my experience. Well, uh, like that other store across from, uh, you know, it was like the last time you we went to the mall mm-hmm. where you were trying on a bunch of stuff and that older lady was helping you. Oh, my God. And she kept coming into the dressing room when yeah. I was naked. You asked me why. I wonder, whatever. Yeah, Julian had had it that day. I was looking for a dress, like a, a semi-formal dress. And uh, it was her store. Like, I think they were her designs or something like that. And... She, or she was just a shitty human being. There's always that possibility. But that's happened to me twice. There was one in Westwood, and then there was one here, yeah. where it's the woman who like owns the store, yeah. and they're her fucking designs. And not it, this is, these aren't like expensive ass fancy places. They're no. just like people that happen to rent a little space in the mall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, both of them, kept coming in. That that one girl was saying like, "Oh, your body's so perfect for this," as she like felt me up and down. Yeah. And I was like, um, I, I gotta go. <laughs> Getting very uncomfortable. But the, yep. bl- the older blonde lady that reminded me of Ursula the Sea Witch. Yeah, she was she rough. Just, she made me mad. She just blatantly kept coming in while I was in my underwear and or just ass naked. And yep. I felt like I was at the YMCA with my mom. Yep. Fuck that. If, if we ever go shopping and I get mad, 99% of the time it's about people working and nothing else. <laughs> That not and about how I'm hungry like or not anything. being it's enough Chipotle's. That's the 1% <laughs> that happened today. And we broke down and ate Chipotle. Oh, Chipotle. But anyway, it's a good venting session, I think. Yeah, because it's just really fucking hard to yep. shop for clothes without somebody breathing down your neck and or feeling like, hello, can anyone fucking help me? <laughs> the what's your phone number thing is just like out of this world to me. Yeah. God. I, it's very difficult. All right, let's put it this way. It's very difficult to leave the mall 
feeling super like you didn't get violated at all. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Do you remember we went, I was looking for like a handbag or something for the award show, whatever. And those people in there that one, <laughs> this one girl in the fucking store. I do store, remember that. Oh my God. We it got so bad with her that every time we went there, we would like sort of peer in the window to see if that girl was working. Because and then we wouldn't go there if she was so there. So outrageous. But they, another time when we, I think we actually did successfully oh, get her. that little handbag. They were like, so uh, what are you doing? Oh, where are you going? Or what's it for? And this and that. And they literally, they got to, I was like, do you want to know the day I was born? Like, would you like to know about my parents? Like, you have to be rude at a certain point because they just don't get it. I know. And I'm like, I can't even look at what I'm looking at because I'm trying to be polite yeah. and look at your face yeah. while I'm talking to you. But I'm not yeah. here to fucking Amazon.com doesn't have commission. I'm going to go there. I know. Thanks. This is bullshit. Even then, they girl. take all your information. Dude, that girl wanted to know your workout routine. She was like, no, seriously, what, what do you do? Tell me, what, I want to do what you do. I know. And I was like, look, the mall's closing what? in like 20 Wait, mi- you're 20 trying minutes. to make money and you're asking for a workout plan? I know, but they they like don't respect the fact Fuck that you, you, lady. you might only have like 45 minutes to get something. They disrespect I mean? everything about you. Yeah, like I'm not here to fucking just... Have a strolly, calm, nice time oh, at the mall. Like, I'm kind of here to get shit, and that's the only reason that I'm here. Anyway. My parents didn't drop me off at the mall with my friends to go get slushies and, yeah. and scope out stupid, boys. It's stupid. Okay? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, good venting. Good venting. Good let venting. us, yeah, let us fucking know. Let us know your what, experience. Yeah, what your experience is with retail shopping, and did you do it or not, and... If there's people that fucking bother you. Yeah, and tell your stories. I love when people could, like, tell stories about shit we talk about because shit. there's got to be some good fucking retail stories. But we will be back next Monday yeah, for, for another sure. podcast. Maybe less ranty. Probably, Probably less ranty. Hopefully. Maybe a little more happy. <laughs> we love you guys. Thanks for watching and listening. Go, Paul, guys. See you do, next do, week. Do, do. Next week. Next, next week. Next week. Next week. Next week.